Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I'm going to showcase how we can use IntelliJ as a Git managing tool. And I've done some videos showing Git in the terminal, but now we're going to utilize that IntelliJ, the IDE means you used for, for Java, but they also have other versions, have actually some very powerful Git tools. But just to quickly showcase, we have a random project with for now three branches, a main and a test and a test two, and I think they're actually all up to date with test two. Inside IntelliJ, we can then switch our branches and see our current branch if it is a Git project. So if we have Git set up on the right hand side, on the bottom right hand side, we can click and we can see right now it says main, so one branch main. And if we click it, we can see that we have the branches main, test, and test two. And if you need to fetch, there's this blue arrow up here, meaning if we want to get like branches from GitHub, that's not local. We could fetch but it should be all up to date. And I can then very easily just click on test two, check out, we will see the content of test and go back to main. Okay, they're actually a bit different, which is actually fine. And so on. So very simply, very quickly, we can click on different branches and we can connect to them. And we can create a new branch if needed as well. Simply create a new branch, give it a name. And if we wanna to jump to that branch on creation, we can use this checkout branch as well. Then I think a very interesting feature, let's go to test. You can see the test is already a bit different than main. And let's make it even more different. So I'm just going to add a second system out print called test one. And for now, I'm just going to do a very small example of changes. But what's also very interesting is on the left side is this commit area where we can see all the files that have been changed since our last commit. And if we double click the file or the change, we can see from the previous state to our current state. So we can see here that we have these changes. And if we then want to push using IntelliJ, we then very simply just check out the branches or the changes we want to use. And we can maybe write a commit message. So let's do a south test, which we added as a smart print line saying test, south test. Want to be consistent, we can then either commit our changes or often I would just commit and push. So we can simply say commit and push. And we're then told we are pushing from test to orient test, so local test to orient test, which is on GitHub in this case. And we can push. So pretty simple. And let's then go to main and let's actually try to force a merge conflict. And if we do like a system out print saying main on main, we're gonna push directly on main. Again, that's not really the best procedure and never push anything on main, but just for the showcase, we will again, we are in branch main, we can mid and push. And we then have the changes pushed. If we then wanna merge branches, which is then very easy using this setup, we can simply go onto the branch we wanna merge into. In this case, let's say we wanna merge something into main. I would then stay on main. I would then using the UI in the bottom right hand side, we then click on the branch, in this case, our test branch that we want to merge into main. We can do a merge test into main. We see here also some of the different, we can check the difference with the tree, we can rebase, but just to keep it very simple, if we just want to simply merge our test branch into main, we merge our test branch, and when we then have conflicts, we have this pop-up, and of course here we can see that it's actually doing the, it in the files, the git conflicts, but let's not worry too much about that. We then simply have this pop-up telling us that there's a conflict in the main.java file. We can then simply click on this conflict, and we then get a new pop-up, which is very useful, at least when you actually have bigger projects and so on. My screen might not actually be completely big enough for this. Here is also where like program becomes a lot easier, at least working with large complex projects, especially with merge conflicts, you have a larger screen, but we can simply see here that changes for main is that our, on our main, we have our hello exclamation mark and our main start print line on test because those two changes we're like adding. We have 
I'll test a bunch of exclamation marks and I'll test one. We would then need to choose using these like arrows which version we would like to have be the right version. And let's say that in this case it's actually gonna be just the test version. And we could like pull that change in. We would decline the test change over here. And it's telling us everything is like fixed. And maybe even if there were some mistake that's saying, okay, it's actually a low test, but it's a few less exclamation marks. Even though this is not a change of any of the branches, we can kind of like fix it in this commit that's being created to fix the merge conflict. We would then simply, or we could also just down here, click accept left or accept right if we just directly want all the changes from one specific site, either our like current changes or from the branch merging into our current branch. And we would then simply click apply. And we can see that here we have a small tests or text window showing us and telling us that merge test to main has been completed. If we then now went to GitHub and looked at our main branch, we should be able to see that we don't have any major changes yet. We have our previous commit of south main, but we would then need to push. And here we can then use the UI in the bottom right hand corner, go onto our branch main, we can see that's a green arrow and we would need to push. And again, here it's telling us that we're pushing changes from main until origin main. And that we are pushing two commits, our south test from our other branch, and then the merge branch test into main. So the merge conflict branch, where we're kind of like fixing the changes from south test and main. So first, it kind of like added the south test one. So everything from the other branch. And it then creates automatically like this extra commit to handle our merge conflict situation. And we can click push. And we should now see on GitHub that we now have our changes of first pushing. Oh, it changed the order a bit, but South Test was pushed, South Main was pushed, and we then have our merge conflict here showcasing how it handled that conflict. But the main takeaway should be that the commit window on the left is very powerful to see all our changes. And also, just a quick note. If you made some changes and you then look at the file and you see, oh, I don't want this change, you can then very simply reset a file by right clicking the file and click roll it back. Which then kind of like redoes all changes on that specific file. That's actually very useful sometimes. And then, of course, use the UI in the bottom right hand corner. And of course, in the end, it should be worth mentioning that this is, if it looks a bit weird, this is the old IntelliJ UI. There's a newer version of the UI which works the exact same, but they have moved some of the things a bit around. For example, where you can see your branches and like this part of the UI is no longer in the right bottom. I think they moved it to the top left. But otherwise it would be the same concept of having the commit window and having this like Git interface inside IntelliJ. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this showcase of how we can use IntelliJ to handle Git, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.